I took my revolver out. I put it in my mouth. I prayed. I said, God, forgive me for what I'm about to do. Imagine, you, you have hundreds of people trying to get out one door, and we're trying to make our way into that door. At that point in time, I felt the most intense pain that I've ever felt in my life. He walked in my office, he just tried to jam the lock, and he said, I'm sorry, but I'm here to kill you today. For eight days, they kept me in a, in a dungeon downstairs. My heart stopped eight times. Boy, I was sure trying to die, but I kept fighting it. I mean, it was rivers of blood. I mean, it was truly a massacre. We have a Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. We have a Drug Enforcement Administration. We have a Department of Homeland Security. Where is our counter-human trafficking agency? I called out for help, and all my brothers were coming to help me. I've always wanted to be an officer. Nothing's going to stop me. It, it's so hard to explain to folks who haven't served what families go through. That guilt that we carry on the shoulders of what we've put our families through, it eats at us. My wife told me, she's like, that is what you were made to do. We're fighting against all odds, but I believe that the community see that we are fighting in, in their favor and not just to be because we're wearing a uniform. We can't do this without the, the help and the cooperation and the support of the community that we live in. The police need the, the support and cooperation of the community in order to be able to do our jobs effectively.